Hi, Linda. Last time we worked, your knee was sore. What happened afterwards? We couldn't do a proper thorough uh, workup on your knee. And how was it after? We used Shungite and a few other things just as part of what else we were doing. How was so, it? I've been dealing with the pain for at least a month. And I was pain-free, like new, um, for at least a week. And then it started kind of lingering back in and not as constant, but it subtly came back. And then like yesterday it hurt. And then I woke up this morning and it didn't hurt, but now I can kind of feel the aches and pains are there again. But I definitely had at least a solid week of pain-free, pain-free, feeling great. I was like magic. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Wow. I think it was Shungite. Oh, cool. It was Shungite mainly, and I kept going back, and the Shungite wanted to work mm-hmm. some more. And I thought that today we could do a more thorough uh, thorough exploration because there is anti-inflammatory for acute, and that would help your knee. Mm-hmm. Then there's anti-inflammatory for chronic, and that would help your knee. But there's also new stones and putting the techniques and procedures uh, together in different ways. And I thought that we should play around with that a little bit because... You do want to mix it up a bit. You want to learn how to do these crystal surgery techniques and procedures, but you also want to learn how to accommodate new ideas, new materials, and put things together in a meaningful sequence. And that is hard to learn, how to put things together in a meaningful sequence. So let's change it up a little bit and explore some different materials and systematically work on your knee with new techniques and tools. How's about great. it? All right? Sounds great, yes. Okay, doke. But we'll start with some old favorite Shungite because we know it works and it's a good basis. It's giving a kind of a detox and it's also stimulating the cells. It's revving up the cellular metabolism. And why would we skip such a wonderful and important step? So we'll start with Shungite infusion and we do the whole energy system, which means we go in via the whole body. Uh, Your system loves this. Everybody does. But they didn't tell me. And then after the pandemic and people were back, then people said, oh, I love the Shungite infusion. I was like, why didn't you tell me? They take it for granted that I know, because sometimes I can read minds. But I still like to get the feedback. And actually, you know what benefits is your arms, because you're a massage therapist, so your forearms need attention, don't they? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you must always remember that your arms and legs resonate with each other. So if you relax your forearm, it will help your lower leg. And if you relax your upper arm, it will help your upper leg, because there's a resonance in between the limbs. Well, it's like it's melting your legs, just going, yes, yes. Oh, it's amazing. I can feel a shift here already. It's so interesting. So, Shanga, it's a lovely, lovely, lovely stone to begin with. And what I like to do is actually fan after the Shanga step, because I find that the Shanga pulls up some stuff that can then do with clearing. So we will fan after the Shanga step. So that's just changing up the sequence a little bit, but with an intention and a clarity and an insightful process, not just for the sake of it, but because it makes sense. So that's really, uh, as soon as I come to the sore leg, you see, I can feel stress in the lower leg here still. That was the other thing, is I didn't even tell you I was having this issue last time, and you just found it. I didn't want to tell you and distract from what we were doing. Uh, and you just found it. <laughs> so grateful. <laughs> it kind of found, finds me. Is yeah. how I'm going to put it. This is a lot better than last time. I remember it was swollen, and it isn't anymore. It's absolutely, it's excellent. But that is too. That doesn't feel firm enough yet. That's a little mushy still. So we'll get there. But and that's how I'll know if it's okay again. Let's do I like your blue nail polish. Look at this in the camera, Neil. <laughs> Look at 
that. Summer is a coming. Mm -hmm. And really? boy, are we glad. We got that spring feeling now, haven't we? Yes. That's it. Now, you see, this is interesting. This foot is taking a little bit of strain because you're having to protect this side. So this foot was really grateful for this attention. Never work one-sided, folks. Whatever you do on the one side, at least do some. It might not be for the equal amount of time, but you must work on both sides. You got to keep people balanced. I try to do that in massage also. Yeah. You, you know, you, you know the, the injured side needs more work and more attention because it's injured, but you can't leave the other muscles, you know, cold. Mm -hmm. And you've got to get that left-right balance going. Because that's how the energy is meant to flow. Lovely. Oh, this is excellent. Good. All right. I can get lost in this. Let me just do a thorough thing here. And there we go. Oh, nice. Oh, that's nice. I really can get lost in it. All right. But I'm not going to. And stay strong. Now, let's put, let's fan you, and then I'm going to put the support stones on. So let's sweep this off. We can use this. Ah, yes, there's a layer that comes off because you do the Shanghai detox first. Just loosens everything up and releases it up into the energy field, and then you can just fan it. Do the other side. Must do the bottoms of the feet. If people's feet slope down like Linda's do, just lift them up. This is the single most effective thing you can do. Someone's energy field is to clear the foot chakras and to clear whatever's collecting here on the crown. That's it. Good. Excelente. Love it. All right, so now let's get these support stones in place. Look at these new cash along slices. Look at that. Nice big, like a plate. Side plate to have my lunch on. Mmm. Makes me think of lunch. Here we go. Beautiful. How's that feel? Nice. I know. I lend them the nice stones. Now we've got another interesting new combo that we're going to use. It's sunstone and scolocyte. That's a sunstone lingam. Mm -hmm. And this is the scolocyte lingam. And this is, feel this. Oh. Oh, I, I like this feeling so much. I have a pen next to my bed, two spheres, and then I, I use them when I don't want to get up in the morning because I feel heavy. And it makes me feel lighter. It feels it gets rid of that lame feeling and gets me feeling, oh, I can do it. I feel lighter. It's the only way I can describe it. Isn't it nice? Mm -hmm. All right. So we get that all connected. So put one under that in that hand and one in this hand here. And that will give you that lovely, ah, you see that flow? Isn't that neat? Mm -hmm. Good. And we need a little... You know what, I'm going to put the tourmaline, and you t it might be heavy and it might be perfect. You you let me know, that tourmaline. I wanted a third eye stone, I don't feel like going and getting another one, and this one volunteered. How does it feel, good or it feels good. strong? Okay, right. If it gets too heavy, you just let me know. It will actually feel like it's pressing on your head if it gets too heavy, and if you get that feeling, just tell me. Right, so what we're going to begin with is moonstone, and I'm going to begin with infusing moonstone and that is for swelling and potential swelling and it is just very good for helping the fluid balance in each and every cell in the body and so we're going to start with an infusion here yeah, like this with the moonstone and these are my moonstone palm stones and I do have a little supply of them And 
And this is helping. Lovely. 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 Delish. I feel like I'm floating. A little energy. It's delicious, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then I'll take my moonstone lingons. And I'll infuse. Oh, isn't that lovely? So I'm taking a little bit of anti-inflammatory for chronic and building it into what we're doing here. The chemistry and the ingredients. And I'm putting it together just very slightly differently. And I'm doing everywhere. And then my big interest, of course, is the right knee, where the discomfort is, but we smooth everything out. It is actually amazing how I can feel the tissue in your body so much smoother and calmer. And I wouldn't have said there was anything wrong, but the comparison after the Shungite and the Moonstone infusion is actually quite phenomenal, the sensation. And now I go in, and this is where... Your tool is so helpful. Look at this fine lingam, how I can get into this tissue. Isn't that fabulous? Mm -hmm. I am not massaging. You've got to understand I am not a massage therapist. It may look like massage, but I am getting the crystal into the energy field right next to the physical body. And if it feels like a massage, that's just your good luck. But that is not what I'm doing. I'm trying to get that moonstone. By the way, do you know what moonstone is? Uh, you know that moonstone is not its real name. Do you know what it is? No. It's adularia. Oh. And that blue shine that moonstone has is called adularescence because it's unique. And it's a shine that only happens when the light hits it. So it's not in the stone. It's an interaction between the chemical structure, microstructure of the moonstone and the light. Hmm. And actually I'm talking about it on the next radio show, which we will be, rec which will be broadcast next week, Friday. Second... Friday in April 2022, and we're also interviewing Neil. And that will be up on healthylife.net, so you can go listen, because this will get posted after the show is downloadable and on demand. That's good. How's that feeling? Feels good. It's lovely, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So this is a felt spa, so Adularia a.k.a. Moonstone, and this is Rainbow Moonstone specifically, is a felt spa, but so is Lava Cut. So this is Lava Cut. And actually I've got a Lava Cut Lingam now in Tucson, so that's new. So I have been using these Lava Cut Palm Stones, and I will use them, and I'm also going to use the Lava Cut Lingam. Now, Felt spa is generally cooling to the body, but lava cut is warming and it warms the tissue. And for people with peripheral neuropathy and any kind of nerve engagement in whatever the, the is wrong, whatever is hurting, the lava cut will help heal the nerves ending. So I'm going to use the lava cut and you'll see how nice it is. So we'll start here. An instant uh, relaxation of the tissue. Did you feel it? Mm hmm It's so phenomenal. This lava cut is fabulous. There we go. Now we get to get the blue toes again. Now 
lovely. Lovely. This leg wants more. <laughs> it's going to get more. Ah, okay, now the leg wants more. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course it's the leg. Then the leg. No, I oh, know, it does need more. Uh, you're right. I'm just, I'm just pulling your leg. <laughs> there but see, this foot's happy now. You see, this foot's got something in the nerves that we need to watch over. That's it. That's it. See, doesn't that feel like something reassuring or something like that? Yes. That's right. Supporting. Yeah. So let's um, let's do the more with the lava coat um, lingam. See again, I can get it in. See if I try and use this edge here. That's what it will feel like if I use the edge of the palm stone, but if I use the edge of the lingam, you get a different experience. Isn't that neat? Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's a detail, isn't it? Yes. Wow. Yeah, that's the other side. There, right in the middle of the joint, this your knee likes. Lovely. Right. So this is for the nerves, and I am going to continue with for working on the nerves and healing the nerves in, in the next phase, and I'll show you in a moment. Right. Does your leg feel like that's enough for the moment? Because there's a lot more to come. Yes. Okay, good. Because we don't want it to satisfy the leg. That wouldn't help. Plus, legs can kick. So we don't want that. All right. So now I'm going to um, put these green garnets here. And green garnets have this amazing capacity to suck out pain. So we like that. So I'll put one underneath the knee, like so, and the other on top, like so. And then we activate it a little bit by pulsing. That's been activated now. And I'm now going to do diopside and Thunder Bay Amethyst for helping the fascia to become less irritable. So that is V-gridding of the entire energy field. And here we go. I'm going to use my nice, big, fabulous tools. So here we are. That is the upside, and that's the active point. And this is my Thunder Bay Amethyst. And it's a red cap with a very nice red cap. <laughs> I am proud of it. And it's got nice hold. Look. It's one of those crystals that's got a beautiful way for being held, and I do love it. And this one is also rather fabulous. So here's my bowl. I kind of rest it there on the table. Makes it easy. And I can start on the midline. And there I come down, like so. And clear. And then I come down. And clear. And again, three times down the midline. And clear. And then again, this way. And clear. This way. And come to this side. That a little closer. What I like to do with this particular technique is do a before and after test of checking the elasticity of the fascia through the entire system. And I didn't do it now, but I will do it at the end just to check that everything is correctly elastic. And then I know that I did a good job. 
So I want that physiological change. I want to see it. I want to perceive it. Otherwise, I'm just making up stories to suit myself. Nice. Let me do that. You open the V-grid, because that's the V-grid, but you're going to get on either side of the leg, so you open it up like that. And the same here. Oh, the legs love this. This is a number one technique for you, Linda. Mm -hmm. So I'm impressed that just the shungite last time was enough to transform your knee. And I think that's the thing I keep saying. If you can only have one healing crystal, it's going to be shungite. Because look how powerful that was. And that was a natural and spontaneous report from Linda, I assure you. She's not a plant. Okay, that was that. So now I like to check, and the way that I check, and if this is for people who know how to do this kind of move on people, so you do want to be qualified, you don't want to be a lay person just trying to tug on people's legs. But as an Alexander teacher, I can do this, so I pick up the legs, I usually do it before and after, and, I, and then I, I let them rest in my hands. And then I just lean back from my ankles, and I see if Linda's body can stretch along with me, and it can. It's hooking up at the shoulders, though. I can't get to her neck and her head, so I know there's more to go. But at least I can get all the way up to the shoulders. Sometimes you can only get to about here with getting the tissue to stretch. Good. Excellent. So that I think we will continue next with our other stones and let's just get them organized and sorted. So Linda, before we go on with those other stones, let's just check your knee and see how it's doing because I do like to do a little spot check and I must say it's feeling much, much firmer. You see before there was a slightly mushy feeling underneath the knee. And that comes from the swelling of the tissue. Then as the swelling goes down, the knee the cap, the patella, feels more firm and stable. And I can feel that firmness and stability has restored. And I would venture to say that at this second, you do not have any discomfort or pain in your knee. Correct. Yeah, so yeah. it's... And, and see, even this tissue here... It's still sensitive to my fingertips. Yeah, they're still a little... Yeah, especially there where it's bubbling. It's even bubbly in there. But it's flowing. It's not stuttering. It was as if when I did this before, it was... <coughs> and now it's... Uh, 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 which, is a, which is a progression. Mm -hmm. And let's see if we can get rid of that from... Uh, 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 to... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what we yes, want. Please. And that's what those next the next stones are going to introduce. So to make the sound of the knee, because this was uh, 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 this the knee is actually going ooh ooh <laughs> because it's more stable. But the sound it was making when we began was ah ah ah. So you know, I listen for that sound in the tissue and I know it makes me sound like a crazy woman, but I truly do hear it, and I truly do feel it as a resonance inside me as well. So I don't want to have a pain in your knee, so I'm very glad to help you with it. I remember in school, when I was in elementary school, the teacher said, you can't have a, you can't have a pain in my knee, and I have begged to differ. I can have a pain in your knee, and I do. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, there we go. So let's go with our seraphonite. So now what is making that sound in here is actually the way the nerves are behaving. So we're now moving. We did the diopside and thunder bear amethyst and that was for the fascia. We've done work on the individual cells and their cellular metabolism using shungite and moonstone. And now we're going to go from the fascia, which is the tissue, 
we're going to go into working with the nerves and that for that we're going to use the two stones that are nerve compat compatible and that is seraphonite and aquamarine and we're going to start up here because that's the right thing to do and infuse seraphonite here to help her feel all fabulous because all fabulous is the way to go with crystal healing and with these two stones I do switch over but just I don't have to do a lot oh now see this is relaxing remember when I held the feet I said it's not getting into her shoulders so now I know that she's something going on in her neck and that the nerves coming from the neck the cranial nerves are a little bit over triggered and this will help with that and actually there's something else that will help with that because now that I'm feeling it I'm going to be responsive and I'm going to use my lovely moonstone on Linda's neck if we can just bring the camera this way I'll wait for you thanks very good and then I'm going to lift your head and I'm just going to bring the moonstone here to help your neck release. This particular moonstone lingam is very sympathetic to neck tissue, the neck nerves. So it's a property of the particular stone, not the property of moonstone. It's something to do with the shape of the lingam and its own personal qualities. Isn't that just what you needed? Uh huh. It's almost like a light little tickle that soothes. Yeah. The, the, ooh. That's it. Nice. And I am actually going to go down now. If you can swing the camera now to the feet, I'm going to check whether I can get that tissue. If I if I rest her heels in my hands and I lean back, will I get up to the head and neck through the fascia chain? And let's try that out. There we go. And I do. I mean, I can totally feel it, you see? And it, it's the whole, if you can just swing the camera so we can get head, head to toe in, that will... And then I'll lean back again and you will see little move, subtle movement at the head and neck. That's it. I'm getting past the shoulders now there. And that may, it induced her shifting her head and neck. And that was just from me holding her feet. So now we've got a whole body response. That blocking that was going on in the shoulders, we alleviated that. And that's thanks to a communication to me from the Seraphonite and Aquamarine. Very good. And this is how you want to work. You want to be responsive and feeling what's going on. Now, if you can't feel what's going on, and you want to, how is she doing that? How does she know? Then you want to do the how to read energy course, because all the information of how I know and how I'm getting that is in the how to read energy course. And that, of course, you have to practice. You have to practice. I think we'll put that to the side for this part. And this is where I can feel a, a grand settling in your leg. Very nice. Woohoo! See, she's speechless now because she's really getting a deep relaxation. Ah, so absolutely, as I put the seraphonite into the shin tissue over here, 
that smoothing effect that I wanted is happening under my hands. I can feel it happening where it's going from uh, 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 to shh. Exactly the right effect. And you can see I'm leaving the knee, which is this, the most painful area, for last. And you'll see why in a moment. And at this point, we're really dropping into a new zone. And if Linda is not already asleep, she will be very soon because her whole nervous system has gone, oh, I'm going to switch to being very relaxed now, which of course, the aquamarine switches you from stressed to relaxed. Of course it does that. And we did, we did use it in the area of the, the vagus nerve. Briefly, but we began there. I did this to put the aquamarine on the vagus nerve. And then I did this. It's built in. Right. That's it. Man, I'm feeling like a genius right now because of the way the tissue is responding. Very good. Not a bubble in sight. Absolutely amazing. Smooth. And I'm just going to check in here with the slingum. And now the seraphonite sphere. Fabulous. Right. So, we've done the nerves. Now I have two new stones to work with. This is chrome diopside. And this is prenite. This one is prenite with epidote. This one is chrome diopside. I'm going to use them together to finish the job of reconditioning Linda's leg tissue. And I've discovered that this has amazing properties for working with the fascia as well. And then this is the companion stone. It is a catalyst for the chrome dioxide. This is prenite with epidote, and it's a catalyst. I like to work with them together. So I'm going to just again take that off, and I'm going to go in here like so. And this is basically my finishing move for this tissue. Now if I were to just go straight in with these two stones, I wouldn't get the effect that I'm going to get now because this is the roof or the cherry on top and I have to do all the other techniques and procedures very systematically in order to build everything up to get to the point where these two and do their fabulous thing. And I can feel what this does is it integrates the tissue. You know, the you know, um, muscle tissue has an interlocking system. And what this is doing is restoring the connections. I can feel it. I can, I can, I'm getting a pictures in my head of how the tissue is going. You know, when we tear, the tissue literally gets torn and twisted and so on. And I can feel that what's happening with the chrome dioxide is that that realignment has happened because of the other stones, but still that meshing has needed to happen. And the chrome dioxide is giving that meshing effect. I can feel it happening under my hands. I can see it in, on my mind screen. And it's rather fabulous. Because that's what's going to make it all feel strong again, you see, when it, it, it meshes up correctly. 
and all the little links. Sarcomeres, actually, they've got a name working in tandem correctly. Wow. Are you awake there? Kind of. <laughs> How's it feel? We want your feedback, <laughs> and uh... It feels wonderful. Uh. Gosh, I'm going to switch hands. Gosh, I'm in love with this material. It's profound, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And you were playing with the chrome dial upside because it attracted your eye when you came in, when, you know, at the beginning. And does this feel different from when you were just doing it on your own knee? Yes. Because of everything that came before, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This leg also likes it. Wow, eh? Look at that. This is what athletes need after they've been working out. And then this reconditions the tissue quickly. Wow. I'm going to go look at those chrome dial upsides that I still haven't put a decent price on them. <laughs> I actually got them last year into some... So there was no sale. We came back when we came back. The pandemic had started not last year, two years ago. I didn't go to Tucson last year. Twenty twenty Tucson. I got the chrome dial upside. All right, that is chrome dial upside and prenite. There's no pain in your knee anymore for the garnet to pull out. And now it not only feels stable, it feels springy, which is ideal. You want to have spring and elasticity in your muscles. That is healthy muscle tissue. And that is springy again. You can actually see it when I do that. You know, it's like it's like the jiggle of the brisket when it's cooked. It's the correct jiggle of the kneecap. <laughs> All right. You are cooked, my dear. Let's take this one out and let's thank say you. thank you. Thank you.